in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this that's why god insisted that every one of us should be anointed but most of us don't walk in the anointing because we don't know we have it and some know but we don't know how the anointing work there are three laws for the anointing the first is that god must be with you acts 10 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil how because god was with him so if you want to walk in the anointing make sure that you keep a walk with god if you walk with god the anointing will work i came here today not trusting anything i just know there's an anointing on my life that it will work not because i saw a vision but god is close to me i walk with god and if i keep a walk with god the sick will be healed if i keep a walk with god strange things will keep happening because that's the law of the anointing if god is with you the anointing will work so when you are going to the market to trade the question is will the business prosper or not no that's not the question the question is is god with me if yes go that's the key god was with him oh they say this thing will not work they say witches and wizards are here that's not the problem the problem is have you received the holy ghost since you believe yes is god with you yes go there you will take over is the errand of the anointing for you to be a witness and some of you the witness you will be here is that god is faithful some of you the witness you will be here is that god can change a non entity and make him a champion some of you the witness you will be here is that god can change the story of a helpless man and manifest his faithfulness that is why he's empowering you not because you are the best not because you are the smartest but god is telling the story through your life and the instrument is using is the anointing but the question is is god with you that's why the devil will fight to make sure you don't have a walk with god if you have a walk with God, the anointing will work. Number two, what is the second law of the anointing? God must be glorified. We heard the story of Jesus when he went to the wedding feast in Cana. Oh, the wine is finished. Woman, it's not yet my time. And the woman, <laughs> the mother looked at him, turned to the servant, whatever he tells you to do, do. Whatever. And she left. And Jesus told them, fill the water jars with water. They filled it. He said, fetch, go and give the governor of the feast. And suddenly, water turned to wine. And the Bible said something. It said, this is the first miracle he did, that his glory may be made manifest. If your focus is for God to be glorified, then the anointing will work. So that business is not about, I'm now the richest man in Enugu. That's for the people of the world. That business is not that, I have houses everywhere for you to boast and then they start calling you as they go that's not the focus that business is that i started with nothing but god helped me give god the glory that business is that when i came to this place i knew nobody but god was my help that business is that i am standing today because god helped me so that everybody will look away from you and look at the god that supported you so if you want the anointing to work turn the glory to god if god becomes the substance the object of your praise the anointing will begin to walk beyond what you know because the anointing came to be a witness why will people be healed tonight it's not to prove that i'm an apostle the message is not me the testimony is not me why will people be healed today to prove that jesus is not in the grave he has risen so when you see deaf ears opening it's not because the man is powerful if you see blind eyes seeing it's not because the man is special everything happening here is to show you that the jesus of the bible is still alive today and you can trust him if you will channel the praise to god the anointing will work is the key you carry an anointing that should make you a wonder to your world but the problem is most of us have not engaged the anointing how do you engage the anointing walk with god Give the praise to him and number three the anointing is about men making the life of others better if you are selfish the anointing cannot work look for 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me have you not noticed that those of us who are anointed things happen very easy when it's about others 
So up to today, if I have a sleep or a stomach ache, sometimes I exercise my feet for two days. Sometimes as little as headache, I will pray and pray and pray, meditate on the word of God sometimes for hours before headache goes. And then when I go out, somebody tells me there's a growth in the body. I say, growth, leave now. Before I turn, they are shouting. The growth has gone. Over. And then I'm wondering, why am I struggling with headache for so long? And it's taking almost less than a moment for something more than headache to leave somebody. He said, what you are using for others is the anointing. What you use for yourself is your faith. I've gone for meetings before where I had fever. I was feeling feverish. I struggled to preach. The moment I say in the name of Jesus, people started shouting. I can see. I can hear. And I leave that meeting. Fever becomes intense. I exercise my faith. The next day it doesn't work. I say, get me paracetamol quickly. <laughs> before, I, before I die here. <laughs> are you following? People are healed yesterday. Shouting. As you are going to the hotel, they are still sending testimonies. The pastor will come the next day to escort you and says, Man of God, till this moment we are still taking testimony. You will be taking paracetamol. <laughs> because if it is about people, the anointing will work. See, some of you, God wants to make you great because there are many orphans that must have parents. Some of you, God wants to make you well because you need to occupy leadership position to write policies that will change the land because if you are not well the land will not be delivered but you must come to a point where you know it's not about you the spirit of the lord Luke 4 18 is upon me for he has anointed me you will never find anything about himself to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised no one was for him every one of us here who has the holy ghost is dangerously anointed you make a mistake when you think an anointed man is coming and you who is unanointed you are coming to be blessed you make a big mistake the man coming here is coming here because he is being called into an office to teach you the truth it doesn't mean he carries something that you don't carry every one of us has an anointing and can i shock you the anointing i have is the same anointing you have but they work differently it's just like electricity it produces sound for the sound equipment it produces light for the light equipment it produces cold for the cold equipment it produces heat for the heat equipment but the same thing is current flowing through all of them do you know the anointing you carry you don't carry the anointing of anybody that has died listen there are mantles there are impartations but the anointing you and i have is the anointing that was on jesus christ acts 10 38 god anointed him with the holy ghost and power acts chapter 1 verse 8 you too you were anointed with the holy ghost and power so it was what jesus carried that you carried what it means is that if jesus raised the dead we can raise the dead if jesus healed the sick we can heal the sick if jesus cleansed the lepers we can cleanse the lepers if jesus was never defeated we too should not see defeat but the problem is that god was with jesus is he with you Jesus was all about others. Are you about others? Jesus was all about the glory of the Father. Are you about the glory of the Father? That's why it looks as if you are not anointed. But I came to announce to someone tonight, a dimension of oil that has never been seen will manifest in and through your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Telling you, see, if we realize who we are, you'll be shocked. Ah! We will become a people of wonder a people of wonder see some of you what you carry if the world see it if the world see it it will be a new dispensation entirely in the operations of god but the anointing has laws that's the first thing god has given you you carry an anointing you are not empty you are not naked the holy ghost came to empower you so that you too will be a proof of a dimension in God the second thing God gave us to give us victory is his name and you know what a name does a name is not primarily to introduce you a name actually reveals authority that people carry 
And when somebody gives you his name, it means he has given you the legal right to represent him. So when Jesus gave us his name, it means anywhere they have need for Jesus, if we show up, Jesus has shown up. It's just like if the governor sends a representative to this service. If you want the governor to talk, he's the one to talk. And if he talks, it's as good as the governor has spoken. So when Jesus gave us his name, he made us his representatives. That means anything Jesus would have done if he was present, the moment we come, that thing must happen. Because we are no longer coming in our name. We are coming in his name. But the problem is that most of us don't know the excellency of the name of Jesus. So let me try to explain to you what the name of Jesus is as we pray in the next five minutes. You know, in the, in the Bible, when, when you study, you discover that God is too big. God is so big that in the whole Old Testament, it was difficult for them to trap his reality or to communicate his reality. So what God did was that he fragmented his realities and he revealed it to them at different dispensation from time to time. But you see, the way God encapsulated his reality and gave to the children of Israel was in the order and the similitude of names. So when you read your Bible, you will discover that all of the saving dimensions of God, all of the favorable dimensions of God that has to do with his benevolence are all captured in an order of name that begins with El. So you see El Shaddai, Elohim, El Elyon, El Nisi, because that's how he captures all of his favorable dimensions. So when you carry any L, God is doing something for his people and is demonstrating his power in an order of his salvation. For example, you look at El Shaddai. When God wanted to bless Abraham, all Abraham knew about God was El Shaddai. All, the whole revelation of God. See the many wonders that Abraham did. All Abraham knew was El Shaddai. All. He didn't know anything in God's syllabus outside El Shaddai. In fact, God was speaking to Moses. Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. And he said, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. But by my name, Jehovah, I did not appear to them. So when you see that Abraham conquered four kings, with 318 servants he was working with El Shaddai when you see that Abraham calls Isaac and blesses him to dominate the whole world that was the excellency of El Shaddai and Isaac calls Jacob blesses him and he blesses him with El Shaddai Jacob calls his children bless them bless them with El Shaddai see how mighty they became it was on the strength of El Shaddai that Jacob was telling Judah the scepter shall not depart from Judah neither shall the law give her in between his feet until Shiloh comes because of that statement that Jacob made King David had to come from the lineage of Judah even Jesus the king of kings had to come from the lineage of Judah because they found the dimension of God's faithfulness in his multi-breasted provision as El Shaddai so when they carried El Shaddai they didn't lack anything see the way Jacob, Isaac blessed Jacob I bless you with corn and wine. There was no regard for inflation or deflation. I bless you with the dew of heaven. And anywhere this man went, no matter the economic structure, they prospered. I told you the story yesterday, how he dug where they collected it. He left, they were dried. He dug another one, they collected it. He left, he dried. The people now discover this thing is not about the location. There's something about this man. So when he dug the third one, they left him alone. And they called it Rehoboth. So he carried everything he needed because a man had one name that communicated a dimension of God's provision that made it impossible for him to lack. Such was the glory that these people manifested. But all they had were individual dimensions. Then God appeared to Moses and introduced himself as Jehovah. And on the strength of that revelation, Moses goes to confront the strongest nation in the world. Imagine you stand up now and go to Russia. <laughs> Think about it. 
but that was what Moses did because that was God's assignment for that time if it is God's assignment now it can happen if God sends you now it can happen because it's the same yesterday today and forever but it was Moses he sent and Moses went to Pharaoh and said the God of the Hebrew have sent me let my people go that they may serve me and the man thought it was a joke who is your God that I should obey him Hebrew Moses knew that he wasn't asking for nomenclature so Moses wanted to invoke the God how did he invoke him Jehovah every time he calls that name Jehovah appears so if they call the name they are not trying to name God they are trying to invoke a dimension so names invoke dimensions that was why Moses was never stranded he stood before Pharaoh he dropped his, his, his staff staff became a serpent the magicians of Egypt dropped theirs Moses' serpent swallowed their own and he carried it up that's Jehovah you, you, you still want to know him <laughs> I've introduced him Pharaoh said give me it tomorrow Moses came again the God of the Hebrews said I should tell you let my people go that they may serve me who is he? he said okay by this time tomorrow and every by this time tomorrow either frogs show up or the sea turns red or darkness covers the earth until the last time Moses told him you will not see me again who talks to a king like that? why was he not afraid that he will be killed? because he is coming in Jehovah you can't kill him you can't even think it you will be wrong to think it because when it comes in the name of jehovah you are seeing the god of judgment he can turn to Saboat. he can turn to ra he can talk see he can turn to anything because when he calls that name he is not introducing god he's invoking dimensions and that night the bible said there was a cry in egypt that has never been heard all the firstborn sons were killed including those of animals and pharaoh said go and tell him to leave now everything he wants to carry should carry and moses left you thought that was over it's not about fighting kingdoms only he now faces a sea and he turns to god and god said why are you coming to me you have gone in my name that means i'm with you face the, the sea stretch your rod and moses stretched the rod god was walking from heaven the bible said with a blast of his nostril he parted the red sea and they crossed the red sea what was he carrying jehovah that was all he carried jehovah it was jehovah that dropped that destroyed egypt it was jehovah that subdued pharaoh it was jehovah that parted the red sea it was jehovah that caused water to come out of rock it was jehovah that caused serpents to bite them and they didn't die it was jehovah that made their shoe grow with them it was jehovah that made their clothes not to tear it was jehovah that made them destroy sihon the amorite it was jehovah that made them destroy all the king of basha every battle moses fought he fought in jehovah all he carried was jehovah sometimes he becomes jehovah rafa sometimes jehovah nisi sometimes jehovah ra sometimes jehovah support any dimension they need jehovah becomes it so a name in the spirit is not a nomenclature it invokes dimensions by the time the new testament came if god wants us to carry individual names it will become too much all of us will have to be theologians so the bible said it pleased the father that the fullness of the godhead should dwell in one person bodily and so instead of jehovah nisi jehovah rafa jehovah shama the bible congregated all the names of god and made it together and called it jesus and he said he shall be called jesus because he shall save his people from their sin he said because of what he has done god gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow every tongue should confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father so if you meet pharaoh today you don't need to go back to Jesus say Jehovah it will be answered if you confront hunger today you don't need to go to El Shaddai call Jesus it will be answered so when we carry Jesus you know what that means we carry everything that all the prophets all together carried Abraham carried one Elijah carried another one Moses carried another one all of them carry different dimensions of God but when we show in the name of Jesus we aggregate everything they ever carried oh my god that is why we are undefeated defeatable that's why we are champions that's why our possibilities are endless when I say Jesus every possibility of Abraham can happen with me
when I say Jesus, every possibility of Moses can happen with me. If I say Jesus, every possibility of Elijah can happen with me. That's why Jesus said, of all the prophets born of a woman, he said, none was greater than John. Because John came to introduce Jesus. He said, but the least of you in the kingdom, you are bigger than John. Because you are not introducing him, you carry him. I carry Jesus. I carry Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Imagine for a second with Jehovah. The Bible said for 40 years they walked through the wilderness. It said there was no feeble among their tribe with Jehovah. How can you be sick here? With Jehovah, no kingdom could subdue them. Which gang up can kill you? You don't just have Jehovah. You don't just have El Shaddai, El Elyon, El Nisi. You have one name that captures all of them together. That's what God gave us. He said, in my name, go, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Everything God has ever done and will ever do is encapsulated in that name. That's why when you carry Jesus, Abraham will look at you and wonder what you can do. Moses will look at you because all their dimension is buried in your dimension. Are you ready to exercise Jesus? Can you, in a moment, just hallow that name? That's the answer to all the crises of humanity. Hallow that name. Hallow that name. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee bows whether they are demons whether they are a government whether they are a civilization whether they are an oppression it doesn't matter at the name of jesus every knee bows and he said every tongue confesses that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father come on can we honor that name He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that you have been brought into the system of life is not enough. That government will follow you. When you leave Egypt, don't sing. Egypt will follow you. It doesn't say, oh, you have left my border, so go. It will try to plant itself inside of you. That's where you will fight it down. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Next verse. He said, put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand or stand against all the wires of the devil. Next verse, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. There are instituted government in the demonic realm that have set out to make sure you don't fulfill destiny never make the mistake of thinking what's happening around you is a coincidence that's a deception from the pit of hell they know the possibilities that your life will command so individual beings are not just fighting against you systems are put in place to make sure you don't make it that's why when you enter a territory you discover there are different battles in different territories that is systemic warfare going on and that's not all darkness is also a civilization it will come to educate you to think in a particular way and that's why some people think defeat no matter what you say they never think they are the ones prophesy from morning to night God is raising somebody they think is their neighbor they will never see themselves a civilization has reoriented them that they are perpetual failures there are other people that think sin and iniquity that's the operating system there's no way they can think anything other than that because they've been hedged into a civilization and when those thoughts saturate them they begin to leave them out because they think those are the things that define their value system that's why you see our young men today living recklessly our young women living immorally because they think that's where their value system is it's a system of it's a civilization that educates you and makes you a servant galatians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 the bible showed us this is one of the major reasons christ died it said grace to you and peace from god our father and from our lord jesus christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of god the father the word word there is the word aeon 
It means an age. It means a civilization. It means a, a culture, a system of thinking and living. And there are many people that cannot be blessed. Not because God is not powerful, but because of how they live. Because of how they think. You cannot change the way they think. You cannot change the way they live. So it becomes impossible for them to walk in the blessing. Because darkness is a civilization. If the entities can't get you, the government will be built around you. If the government can enslave you, the civilization will be brought to educate you. So that you make yourself the slave. Either by how you think or by how you live your life. And finally, darkness is an oppression. So you have sickness, you have poverty, you have ignorance, and you have death. These are operations of darkness. Sickness, poverty, ignorance, death. They are operations of darkness. There are many people with great destinies, but they will never do anything that will bring forth resources to them. The devil makes sure that every channel that should prosper them is short. And you will see them walking day and night, toiling, but nothing should go for it. It's an operation of darkness. Listen, it's not every poverty that is born out of laziness. That's why I told you yesterday, there is a dimension to wealth that is spiritual. He said, my God shall supply all your needs, not according to your investment. I know the place of investment. I know the place of productivity. I know the place of using your gifts and talents. All of these are universal laws. But there is also a kingdom system of prospering. Because there are many people, they work hard, they are productive, they invest, yet they are poor. Because the devil knows that the moment they are empowered, kingdom will move forward. So the devil will fight them from prospering. If you find that kind of poverty that also exists from one generation to another, know that is darkness at work. For such type of poverty, in addition to hard work, you must engage spiritual principles. He said, you shall remember the Lord your God. It is him that giveth the power to get wealth. It takes power to get wealth. It takes a dimension of power to get wealth. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. There is a wealth that comes from glory. There is a dimension of riches that comes from the realm of God. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. So within blessing, the possibility of riches dwells. This does not negate the principle of working hard. But there are other systems superior to the natural. So when you notice that the battle has moved from the natural, you too move. Because when devils are fighting your prosperity, if you like, work as hard as you want. That work will be futile. It is darkness. You find some people, they are just weak. They wake up in the morning tired. Sleeping for two weeks, for three weeks. Meanwhile, those are the kairos moments of their destinies. It's darkness. Because Satan knows that in this season, there's a message from heaven for their next level. And then they are tired, they are weak. It's a type of sickness to drop, pull them down from the frequency of God. And if they don't understand that these things are warfare, they will just think, why oh, am I tired? You are not tired. It's called the garment of heaviness. And so if you don't know how to fight, you will take those things for granted. I'm showing you why, although God can do all things, and God is willing to do all things, and God has done so much, yet you can't see much. Because you are in the middle of a battle. You must fight your way out. So that you walk in the fullness of what God has planned for you. It is an operation of darkness. And for some, it's death. You just see young people with great potentials cut off. And you are wondering what's going on. It is darkness at work. And for some, it is concentrated ignorance. Talk from morning to night, they can't understand anything. And they are wondering, what are they saying? Because the devil will blind your eyes. So that you don't come into the fullness of what God has to offer. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Whom the God of this world are blinded. People are blinded though. It's not because the thing is too hard, but they are blinded. It's an operation of darkness. This is why God too, in addition to all that he did in Christ, he creates a system to help you walk in the blessing. So when we talk about the systems that God has instituted, it's because there are contrary systems in darkness that if you don't take advantage of divine systems, you may never walk in them. And yesterday I showed you one of those systems. It's called the system of faith. 
that you are able to trust God to walk his walk through you so that in trusting God the power of God flows through you and then you are now producing results not just because you have certain competencies but because the power of God is at work on your inside having put your trust in him is a system that God has put to help us gain an advantage over darkness so although I may be educated although I may be a skillful businessman I still choose to trust God I still choose to put my confidence in God and because I put my confidence in God when I step out I walk out be with something much more than my skill the hand of God goes with me when I step out I go out with something much more than my experience the God that I trust now steps out with me and so when the devil comes to fight me he collides something else inside of me that is bigger than me and then he begins to wonder what is going on here you now discover that you begin to give expression to the dimensions of God locked on your inside because you trust him it's a system but that's not all the system I told you there are other systems that God has put in place to give us an advantage and for this service if we will see the instant hand of God we must embrace this system I will talk about two of them and then we'll move forward number one is the anointing God knows he has given us his word to teach us to train us but in addition to his word there is an empowerment of the spirit that he puts on our lives because if God is waiting for you to grow you may die before you even talk about your future so in addition to the word that God gives us to grow on a daily basis he puts a an empowerment upon our lives so that while we are growing that empowerment is working and that empowerment gives us an advantage in places where we don't have wisdom and maturity until we mature he's not negating maturity and growth but we need something to shield us before we get there that was why when the church began he knew that the apostles were infants as touching the assignment of god they were going to fulfill so he told them you have followed me for three and a half years but tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high there's a power coming because if you don't have that power the demons you will confront they are older than your great grandfathers they can set traps that your discernment may not be mature enough to handle they can set traps that your principles may not be strong enough to handle so while you are growing in discernment learning the principles of the kingdom wait until the oil comes upon your life and so the bible said they waited and he said when the day of pentecost was fully come acts 2 verse 1 they heard the sound suddenly as of a rushing mighty wind and he said the place where they were was filled and cloven tongues as of fire was on their head and immediately they stepped out and dimensions that they were not mature enough to handle began to flow through them these were people that did not even understand the gospel they were still rejecting the gentiles because they thought the gospel was for the jews but something had come upon them that was already harvesting the gentiles 3,000 was added to the church. In fact, in Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to Cornelius' house, he still had not known the gospel. The Holy Ghost had to put something, give him a vision. Go there! I'm the one. Imagine, something dropped from heaven. He said, rise up, clean and eat. He said, I will not. I've never divided myself. He said, why are you calling on clean that which I've made clean? Three times, the guy still refused. When God saw that this thing would take another aeon for this man to learn, he said, they came from from me go with them now it's a command when he entered that house how to enter was a challenge because to him he was desecrating himself and he started by telling them you know that i'm a jew i'm not supposed to come into your house because jews don't enter the houses of gentiles i know they will sanction me in jerusalem for doing this but i'm commanded to come that's why i'm here and as he started talking about jesus the holy ghost didn't wait the anointing fell on them because if I'm waiting for these people to grow, the work cannot be done. Can I tell you something? Some of you watching me now, God wants you to begin to sponsor his agenda on a global scale. But it may take 20 years for you to get there. That's why, while you are growing, the anointing will come upon your life. So that anything you touch, multiply. You don't know how. It's an anointing. People are looking at you and say, how are you doing it? You enter sleepers business and all of a sudden you start getting millions. Even you don't know what you are doing. It's an anointing. 
it empowers you for global impact so when darkness comes against you suddenly the anointing turns things around and the devil cannot explain it that was the same grace that was upon something the man didn't know so much but when the hand of god comes upon him he can carry the gate of a city to the mountain top that's the anointing you are operating in a wisdom that you don't know it's an anointing he said out of jesse a root shall be plucked out isaiah 11 verse 2 and upon him is the spirit of the lord the spirit of wisdom the spirit of might the spirit of counsel the spirit of knowledge the spirit of the fear of the lord and he listed seven operations that is happening on his life that's what the anointing comes to do and you know what we didn't end it it was given to us when we received the holy ghost he said when the day of pentecost was fully come they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and the holy ghost fell on them acts chapter 1 verse 8 he said the holy ghost came upon them not many days from now you shall receive the holy ghost and power and you shall become witnesses listen every one of you who accepted jesus an anointing came upon your life the problem is that you are not aware because some of you think to be anointed means you'll be a prophet and as a prophet you'll be calling names and phone numbers to know you are anointed some of you think for you to be anointed you must be an apostle preaching the deep mysteries of god and manifesting power the anointing that the prophet manifests is for his office you are a businessman in the market the anointing you need is for negotiation the anointing you need is for multiplying products in the market you don't need an anointing to prophesy to individuals you are in the government the anointing you need is to attract favor and to exercise authority over the souls of men we need different operations of the anointing